G'day everyone, Paul here from Hopstar Computing Solutions. Today's video marks the first in a series about me exploring the wonderful world of Linux. The details and processes that I utilize in this video will be documented both here on YouTube as well as on my blog, uh, links down in the description. I will be installing Linux on a HP laptop and I've decided to take a calculated risk and have it installed as the only operating system. In the past, I have had a play on a different laptop as a dual boot, but I've decided to be brave and jump in at the deep end, this time having Linux as the only operating system. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with some of the terminology I have just used, here is a quick breakdown. Number one, Linux. It's an operating system, much like Windows, that you can run programs in. Linux is most notably known for being open sourced and mostly free. Uh, two, open sourced, software that is created with the ability to view the code. This means that independent entities can review the software to ensure it is secure and respectful of your data. Three, dual boot. When you have more than one operating system that you can choose when you turn your computer on. Some other words I'll be using in this discussion include distro, which is a type or flavor, if you like, of Linux that will be chosen. Uh, most distros are created to serve a particular purpose. For example, there's a distro called Raspbian, which was created to work on a little microcomputer called a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we'll have more on those later. Daily driver is the computer that you use on a daily basis to get your work done. Something that I've covered quite a bit in my blog posts are why I'm moving to Linux. To save you the time of going over now to read those posts, here's the elevator pitch version. Windows 7 will be reaching its end of life with Microsoft ceasing support and updates as of January 2020, and I do not plan to upgrade to Windows 10. Through research, I found too many red flags with Windows 10 for me to want to use it as my daily driver. Therefore, I need to consider switching operating systems to one that also aligns with my personal beliefs with regards to software, licensing, privacy, security, and stability. Some of the challenges I expect to face are that some of the free and open source software, or FOSS for short, will be lacking in functionality one way or another when compared to their paid counterparts. For example, my new favorite FOSS Excel replacement, Spreadsheets, does not do VBO code in the free version, whereas the existing paid copy of Excel does. This is not a huge deal breaker as I intend to upgrade to the paid version of Kingston soon anyway. But wait a minute, you might be saying to yourselves, you said this software was free. And yes, that is correct. But every business providing free software needs some way to make money. Also, opting for the premium version of a program supports development of said product. Also, compared with Microsoft Office, Kingston WPS is far more reasonably priced. Other challenges will be dealing with a new type of operating system where some things are just simply different. Whether it's typing commands to install programs instead of going to a website to download them, or have a file system that is different when compared to Windows. These can be conquered with a bit of confidence in my own abilities and with a lot of online help that is widely available. The next consideration will be which distro of Linux will I be installing on this laptop? I've done some more research and I have ultimately decided to use a version of Linux called Mint with a desktop environment called Mate. It's spelt M-A-T-E, but it's pronounced Mate, kind of like Latte. Decided to pick this distro because it is the most similar looking when compared to Windows, uh, whilst also being designed to work on low spec or not very powerful computers. This version of Linux is also well supported by the Linux community and regularly updated and maintained. One final decision I've had to make is whether or not to do either A, full disk encryption, B, home folder encryption, or C, no encryption at all. Full disk encryption is the most secure. It will require a password to be entered when a computer boots and means that if someone was to gain physical access to my laptop, it would be very hard for them to get into it at all. Home folder encryption adds protection to the main folder where all your documents are kept. Having no encryption would logically be the least secure, meaning that your files are not protected at all. Now this all comes down to my personal ideologies regarding computers. I think that as a computer trainer, technician and enthusiast, it is important for me to practice what I preach. When it comes to privacy and security, I tend to err on the side of caution 
and what some might call overprotectiveness, I could just call that me. In the end, I have decided that if I'm going to jump in the deep end, I may as well do it with both feet and go full disk encryption. The risk is that if there's any sort of corruption, I might lose all of my work and not be able to recover it. Fortunately for me though, I keep thorough backups of all my important files, I keep my work documents primarily on an external hard drive, and consider my computer copies as backups. Should anything go horribly wrong with my encryption on the laptop, I won't lose anything that's too important. And possibly more importantly, this laptop will be a testing ground for me to try Linux out, not my only computer. Eventually I will be getting a new home desktop computer as well, and I plan to install a distro of Linux, not sure which one yet, onto it as well, and have that be the only bootable operating system on that computer. One other major issue that I can foresee is that as a trainer of computers, I will still need access to Windows 10 and copies of Microsoft Office 2016 or 2019 and possibly even the new Office 365 because I still have to produce training materials on them and train people in how to use these products. I have a possible solution for this that won't require me to have Windows bootable on my system, but that is a topic for another day. Well, that provides more than enough background, let's get to the good stuff. What I want to do first is to test this laptop to make sure that Linux Mint will work properly. To do so, I'm going to use the same USB that I will also be using to do the install of Linux. You can make a bootable USB using a program called Rufus and an image of a Linux distro. I've documented this in some detail on my blog, details for that down in the description, and I'm going to make a little video on how to do this as well. I've got my phone set up to record this. I would not normally choose a phone to record this, but it's uh, what I've got to use at the moment. Uh, because I'm running Windows 10, we actually have to do a bit of a, a special way to do this. What I have here is I have um, Linux set up on a USB. This is just an eight gigabyte USB uh, flash drive. And I've gone through a process of adding uh, my Mint Mate onto this USB in a way that it can be uh, installed onto the laptop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna plug it in And because this is Windows 10, we have a bit of a special way we have to do this. I'm doing this from, from the side of the computer. This is the way I have to record this at the moment. And we go for startup. No, we actually want USB. Uh, USB uh, boot. It's uh, but you can remember the correct wording. Yeah, we want the advanced startup options. Uh, back in the old days, you used to just press a key when it was booting up. Windows 10 does like make things difficult. So it says here, start up in. Uh, from a device, it's the one we want. And if I'm lucky and everything goes well, this should be the last I see of Windows 10 on this machine. It's very important when you're doing something like this that you do uh, make sure you've got all your files backed up. Uh, I've only got the programs installed on the computer, which pretty much came with, plus the ones I added, which were all free programs anyway. And I have all my files uh, backed up on my external hard drive and on my main PC as well. It's a it's a very good way to do it if you can um, to have your main files um, being sort of portable. Obviously, there are some security risks in that. Oh, and I just noticed then, of course, it, it's Windows 10, so it has to do an update before it dies. Uh, that is rather amusing. So we're just going to um, skip this, and I'll come back in a moment. So I've adjusted the camera angle a little bit. It sort of got up to 36%, and then suddenly restarted. So put on your Windows. Okay, now we have these options here. Use a device. Uh, let's see, the internal, no, internal, no. It should be the USB. The only one that is an internal hard drive option. Let it have a think for a moment. I can hear the uh, hard drive engaging. Uh, 
I believe it's now doing a reboot, so it's going to actually boot into uh, Linux. We've got the option here: Start Linux Mint. Uh, enter on that one. Okay, that took about uh, 60 seconds to come up to this point. But it's now loading Linux uh, Mint. Do keep in mind that it's actually running from the USB at the moment, so it's not the, the fastest thing in the world. What's really great about doing it this way is you can also test out uh, Linux on a USB without having to even um, install it at all, uh, without altering your system at all, and you can actually try out several different distros or distributions of Linux um, very safely and see, well, does this work for me? Do I like the environment? What if I actually install some programs? Uh, do those work? Here we go. The beautiful Linux Mint desktop. This is the point where you can have a play around. You'll see it actually looks very similar to Windows in many ways. We have what you would call the start button down here. Uh, we're going to open up web browser. That's not going to work because I haven't entered in my um, uh, Wi-Fi password. Uh, not something else I could open. Not hard to see from the angle that I'm working on here at the moment. In the same way as Windows, you can just select a program and open it up and uh, run it. This one's obviously a system monitor. I'm in trouble. You have a computer folder here, much like you do in, in Windows. It, look, it does look a little bit different. However, you still have you know, the, file, uh, the systems down the side here. We've got, we've got some pre-made folders, just like in Windows. So you have documents folder where you can store your documents. Uh, music for your music, pictures for your pictures, etc. Yeah. So as you can see, everything's very, um, very snappy. Like when I close a window or something, goes on the spot. It uh, goes away straight away. And the computer is not being taxed very hard at all to be able to run this operating system. It's very lightweight, which I think is going to be excellent on this laptop. So um, I am happy with this. I'm going to install Linux Mint. So I just double clicked on that icon. English is fine. I will check to see if there's an Australian English. Otherwise, UK English is the next closest. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's lost it then. English Australian. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Excellent. I will add this later on because uh, my Wi-Fi password is quite complicated, so I um, also don't want to type it on camera, obviously. So I'm just going to skip over that step for now. I'm just going to um, I'm just going to click continue on this one for now. Coming back to that later. So right now it should be just getting itself set up, ready to go. Normally, one of the other ways that you can install Linux is to have it set up as a dual boot, uh, where you can have the ex leave the existing Windows install uh, where it is, and then um, be able to choose when you boot the computer which one you're going to use. Uh, for my uh, case example here, I'm actually going to be erasing the old hard drive completely and putting Linux on that. Now, obviously, it says there, uh, warning. Obviously, that's good that it uh, gives you a nice big bright red warning there. And as I mentioned as well, I want to be um, encrypting this one as well. So I'm going to be going for sort of a higher level encryption um, to make sure that I think is nice and secure. So just change my option then. A 
Okay, that looks good. So this is just saying that if we do this particular method, that um, it might be difficult to go back, basically. And I think that's actually, you know, me really doubling down and committing here. So let's actually go for it. Okay, so once again, it's just letting us know what these settings are going to be, everything that we're going to be doing. Let's go continue. And I think so. Encrypt was uh, uh, unticked there. We might have to come back and do that uh, later on. That is uh, close enough to where I am for the time zone, at least. And here we're just going to do in some details. Well, we can at least encrypt a home folder. Let's do that. It's copying all the files that it needs only from the USB. As you saw before, I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi. This is all just installing from that. The thing that I will need to do after it's finished installing um, is obviously into my Wi-Fi password, and I'll be doing an um, an update and an upgrade. I'll show you how to do that and then we're pretty much done. Okay, so that was taking a little bit of time. So I went and made a coffee and came back and it's turned off. So I'm going to take out the USB. This chick hasn't gone to, just gone to sleep. Uh, we're going to put, oh no, it has just gone to sleep. Hey, but we shouldn't have pulled the USB out. And we'll turn back on and see what we have. All right, looks good. And here we are, that's about it. Obviously, I need to add my Wi-Fi password, which I'm going to do off screen in just a moment, because um, now uh, that I've got this finished, I can actually install something to record the screen instead, which will make things much easier for me to record. So uh, you get a nice little welcome screen here, which is great, obviously, for first time users and also new users like me. Although this is my first time, I'm definitely still new to Linux. So I might um, actually capture this with the screen recording software instead of with my camera. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so it's actually been a few days since the last time I recorded. We are now using a program called OBS to record what's happening on my screen. And um, I've also taken my laptop to work twice to use it in class for the uh, classes that I teach. And I uh, had a few problems. That's sort of to be expected, some teething issues. Uh, first and foremost, the Office Suite, which comes with Linux Mint, um, is very, not difficult to use, but definitely, I'm not used to it and I did not have the time to install the ones that I prefer. I'm actually, the next video I'm going to be producing on this will be about the, the various types of free versions uh, or replacements slash alternatives to the Microsoft Office suite of uh, software. So watch out for that video. Um, and the other problem was that the place where I was working had very bad Wi-Fi. So my plan to to VPN into my, uh, my Windows 10 work environment did not go quite as well as planned. Um, but I was able to tether my phone uh, and its mobile data to my laptop, which also could be the subject of another video. Very handy little trick to have up your sleeve. Uh, just to finish off today, um, I have installed one or two programs here or there, but I wanted to show you the process of actually updating your Linux Mint, or uh, this should work for any Ubuntu 
I believe, uh, version. Do not quote me. Once again, as a disclaimer at the start of this video, I am not a Linux expert. I am very much doing this on the fly and learning as I go. So we'll see if this even works. Um, we bring up what's called the terminal. And I've got two commands that I've got saved over here. Um, we do sudo or sudo apt update. Uh, and this should check for new updates to the system. I have to type in my password here. Because when you um, say the word sudo, you're giving yourself administrative privileges. And then the command is to, to check for updates working. And because uh, the version of uh, Linux Mint that I had in my USB was a fair bit older than what's out now, uh, there's probably going to have to do quite a few updates. Fetching all the information. Still thinking. And what's also interesting, while this is having a think about it, um, because they've obviously realized, well, maybe not everyone is going to be up to sort of typing in commands and remembering those commands. I'm going to get more used to doing it because I think it's important. Uh, but we also have down here, I think it's this icon here, is the update manager. We can actually use this to update everything as well. So rather than having to run commands, this might actually confuse it a bit if you're trying to do more than one. Um, I believe it's now going to do a bit of a check. Let's bring the uh, terminal window in front. I do love how sort of the terminal window is slightly see-through. I believe you can change that transparency. Uh, that is completed. Uh, let's see, system snapshots. Doot, doot, doot. So it's asked me to create an actual system snapshot. So using the update manager is obviously much preferred for new users like myself to be using this. Um, so I'm actually going to close this one for now. And I'm gonna say, doot, doot, doot. yes, create a snapshot. So if anything goes wrong, it'll actually have a backup once again. One of the reasons that uh, Linux is so secure is having to type in your root or master password when um, doing things that alter the system um, makes it much harder for it to um, be hacked into. Yeah, I don't know what either of those mean. We'll click help. The system files. And what's the other one? That one sounds good. Let's use this one. And then set a device. So Time Shift is one of these programs that comes default installed when you installed Linux Mint. Uh, creates the, the snapshot of the system, which it's just doing right now. We don't have much installed, so it should be pretty quick. And once again, I keep most of my work files on a, on a separate hard drive and also sync to the cloud. So um, if I was to have a problem here, then I can actually just format and start again and I won't actually be losing anything other than time to have to reinstall stuff. So a few minutes later now, it's still just finishing up the snapshot here. I swear though, time moves differently. There we go, 44 seconds. Uh, reminds me back of the old uh, Windows uh, 3.1 days where you download a, or move a large file from one place to another and it would say like, we have 10 days remaining. And then a minute later it'd be like, you have nine days remaining. Then suddenly it'd be, you have three hours remaining and you just never knew how long it was gonna take. And uh, I think we're nearly there though. Uh, when this is finished, we'll then be doing, uh, what it will be doing for us, the um, update part, which is coming online to see uh, what new things need to be, be gotten. And then it will um, do the upgrade part, which is then applying those updates. And here we go. That was probably the longest 45 seconds of my life. And zero. All right then, so this should be the end of uh, creating the snapshot. Uh, worse than watching uh, pot of boil, a pot of water boiling and uh, there we go beautiful so I did our sync snapshot in the end that is now done so will the update manager now continue uh, install the updates already knows the updates that it needs to, to do it's 
all the updates and that should about do it for today. It will probably need to restart when it's finished doing this, so I would definitely need to stop my recording before it does that. Once again, we need to put the password in. Make sure you pick a good password that's easy to remember, but not easy to guess. Done a whole section on uh, personal password hygiene on my blog. I will leave a link to that one in the description if you're not sure about making a nice, secure, easy to remember password. There's some good information there. There we go. So we're not going to uh, make you watch all this as well, although it looks like it's nearly done anyway. Goodness. So fast. Although it may need to go through several steps. So I'm probably going to end the video here. I'd like to thank everyone very much for coming along and joining me as I bumble my way through this. Uh, I hope to get better with Linux every, every time I use it. This is a brand new challenge for me and I'm really excited to see where it can, where it can take me and um, where people can learn some more about it for themselves as well. So until next time. Oh, hang on, is it done? I'm just hoping it doesn't try and do a restart. Although it's not Windows 10, so we should be all right. Uh, until next time, though, uh, thank you very much for watching. And remember, never stop learning. See you.